Hey everybody, my name is Patrick McGinnis. Uh, it's great to be here on Smart People Podcast. Thanks to John and Chris for inviting me. And I've actually been on the show before to talk about my first book, The 10% Entrepreneur. And I actually have a new book coming out on May 5th called Fear of Missing Out, Practical Decision Making in a World of Overwhelming Choice. And in fact, there's a lot uh, in that book that has to do with the current state of affairs in the world because decision making has become so important. Uh, you cannot wait around and let the world happen to you right now. You need to figure out what you're going to do. And so what I want to talk about today is what entrepreneurs, business leaders, CEOs, anybody who has to make tough decisions right now should be doing in the time of the coronavirus because we are living through something that's quite unprecedented. But at the same time, I, I actually have to admit, this is not my first time at the rodeo. Since I started my career, I have lived through, this will be my fourth crisis actually, which is pretty shocking when you think about it. But I started my career and soon thereafter we had 9-11 and then there was also, just before that, there was the whole tech bubble that burst in 2000, 2001 and I was working as a venture capitalist at the time. Then in 2008, I was working at AIG. So I was actually right in the middle of that as well. So I've had just kind of lousy luck on, on, on lots of fronts, but as a result, I've actually learned a lot about how to deal with crises, both as a venture capitalist, as an entrepreneur, I guess now as an author, I'm learning because, you know, marketing a book in this environment is totally weird and difficult uh, because everybody's focused on other things. But uh, I wanna share with you what you can do and what I've learned from these crises uh, hopefully will benefit you as you think about how to manage through them in your own time. And I wanna start off by saying, first of all, that this is about business. And so when it comes to the personal aspects, let's, let's obviously all acknowledge that health and well-being and safety really need to come first. And that obviously there are some very vulnerable people in our society right now who are gonna be suffering. And so talking about business and stuff like that, I don't want it to come across as it's something that is ignoring what people are going through at all. And, and the fact that as business people and entrepreneurs, we come from a, a place where we have opportunities and you know we have education and maybe savings and other things like that that allow us to get through this better than some other people. So let's just put that out there on the table first. Uh, because there are going to be a lot of people, a lot of people that are suffering, okay? But at the same time, we need to go forward. We need to build our businesses because if not, there's not going to be anything left once we get back to normal. And so here's the lessons that I've learned from the crises that I've gone through before. The first is you've got to reevaluate everything. This is a chance to step back and say, okay, uh, what I was doing a month ago, six months ago, a year ago, may not be relevant anymore. Does my business make sense right now? If you're doing a business that has uh, large events every week and we're not gonna have events for the next six months, then you're gonna need to rethink how you do that, right? These are basic ideas, but I think this is a chance to step back and question everything you've been doing and ask yourself, you know, what, what can I change? If you have high conviction that what you're doing actually still makes sense, terrific, go with it. If you have a uh, high conviction, it doesn't make sense, you gotta pivot. And if you're not sure, then I would really advise you to sit back and ask yourself tough questions and also consult with other people. Get unvarnished feedback because if you can't get to a clear yes or a no and you're stuck in the middle, you're not gonna have the data you need to actually take action. That leads me to number two, leadership. Leadership is so critical in a time of crisis and when there is no leadership, you notice people get hurt, right? And so. This means that all of us need to step up and be leaders. And I, in my experience uh, living through 2008, I was working for AIG, which is one of the companies that was really affected by the whole thing. And there wasn't a lot of leadership, at least in my division. People were hiding. They were running for the enter the exits. They were hiding under their desks, hoping things would get better. Uh, and that somehow when they came out from hiding, things would go back to normal. That is not the case. You need to provide people with leadership. And I recommend as simple as things is, is reaching out on a daily or maybe weekly basis, depending on who it is, to your employees, to your, to your uh, suppliers, to your customers, all of the stakeholders in your business need to be informed. And not just some, you know, I, I think we've all gotten tons of these emails. It's like, well, our response to COVID, okay, yes, I know that you're cleaning the equipment more often, okay, I get it. Uh, I know that you care about safety and well-being. Thank you, everybody does. Tell me something that I don't know already, right? So get real in, in your communications to different people. Next. Uh, hoard cash. This is what I learned in 2000, 2001, 2008. I mean, you always learn it in a crisis. People stop writing checks. And so if you have cash, 
you got to hoard it. And that means cutting costs, cutting all the unnecessary expenses, potentially cutting down on salaries, like just, ugh. Um, and if you need cash, you're gonna need to find a way, a plan, because let me tell you something, uh, just from my own experience investing in companies right now and, and working on uh, deals in real estate and other areas, everything stopped and people are retrading. And so uh, an opportunity that six months ago, you know, a company that on paper was worth $100 million today might be worth $50 million or maybe it's worth nothing because frankly, if nobody's willing to invest, then what's the point of having a valuation? So this is a time where you're gonna have to be really, really tough on things like expenses, batten down the hatches because unless you're having some incredible revenue event, everybody's buying your product, maybe you make Purell or masks or something, unless you're that person, uh, consumers are just, I think, a shell shock. They're not going to be spending money on things that they don't necessarily need, right? We shall see. But prepare for the worst. Also, when it comes time to cutting expenses, there's another interesting thing I learned in 2000, 2001 during the tech bubble burst, which is that internet companies were able to renegotiate a lot of their payables. And so if you have a ton of payables out there, service providers, and it could be, you know, everybody from a landlord to a... Um, a lawyer, and listen, it sucks not to pay people. I'm not advocating being completely terrible. What I'm saying is have conversations with these people because they may very much value getting paid something than receiving nothing later on. And so in 2000, 2001, there was an entire cottage industry of people who just renegotiated, renegotiated payables for companies. And in fact, this is probably the hot opportunity for 2020 if you're looking for things to do. So keep that in mind uh, that you really need to look carefully at your balance sheet, your payables, and figure out how you can manage them. Next, um, okay, this is a little more personal now. I'm gonna get to the personal thing. So there are two books that I love. One is called Flourish by Martin Seligman. The other is The Happiness Advantage by Sean Acor, and they are positive psychology books. And I didn't know what positive psychology was, to be honest with you, when I started reading them. And if you had told me positive psychology, I would have thought, well, that sounds like a bunch of, I don't know, kind of like new agey woo woo stuff, but it's not. In fact, positive psychology, basically the, the way I think about it is, you know, traditional psychology studies people with problems and figures out how to take those problems away. Positive psychology studies people who are successful and figures out what we can do to emulate their success. And so both of them talk about a concept called post-traumatic growth. And the idea is that when something bad happens, the traditional expectation is, okay, something bad happens and then you kind of, um, you suffer. And then you either go back to normal or you remain traumatized. And in fact, post-traumatic growth is a totally different thing. It says bad things can happen and you can learn from them. You know, you get an illness, you go through a financial crisis, whatever it is, you may end up actually happier and more fulfilled because you focus on what matters to you. You are able to avoid the FOMO. And a lot of people saying, is FOMO dead? I don't know. I, 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 you wanna buy toilet paper? I don't think uh, FOMO is dead if you're trying to buy toilet paper or Purell, obviously. But this is an opportunity to also kind of reflect on what's important to you and focus on, on, on basics. And in doing so, if you can come out stronger and survive from this, you'll be in a much better place down the road. And finally, take care of yourself. This is not going to be over in a week or two. This is, this is a big change. And so making time for healthy activity, whether it's eating well, sleeping, working out, meditation, whatever it is that for you helps you stay sane uh, is going to be really important right now. So make sure to invest in it. Um, again, uh, you're going to have a lot of time on your hands. So if you're interested in checking out a new book, I can recommend my upcoming book, Fear of Missing Out, Practical Decision Making in a World of Overwhelming Choice. Basically, this book is about FOMO, which we just talked about for a minute, but also FOBO, fear of a better option, which is making decisions when, you know, there are a lot of options, but we, we, we're kind of waiting for something better to come along. And I've seen a lot of that right now in the crisis. And the problem is if you wait too long, all your options are gone. And so this book is about FOMO and FOBO and decision making. And, and it comes out on May 5th. You can, you can pre-order it right now on Amazon. If you're interested in what I do, you can find me on LinkedIn, Patrick McGinnis, Facebook, Twitter, at PJ McGinnis, Instagram, at Patrick J. McGinnis. Uh, and on my website, patrickmcginnis.com. And also, you can check out my podcast, FOMO Sapiens, distributed by Harvard Business Review. Uh, and it's got tons of cool leaders talking about uh, what they do, how they make decisions, and how they live with conviction in a world where there's lots of crazy things going on and you have to pick something if you're going to be successful. So I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you so much. Stay well, and we'll talk soon.